In this video, we're going to take a look at four factors that affect the rate of nucleophilic substitution reactions. So um, the four factors that we're going to look at here are the identity of the nucleophile, the identity of the halogen, which is also called the leaving group because it leaves, the um, class of the halogenoalkane, so whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, as well as the particular choice of solvent. So starting off with the identity of the nucleophile, I think it's really important to keep in mind here that only SN2 reaction mechanisms are affected by the identity of the nucleophile. And that's because in SN1, the nucleophile only attacks after the rate determining step. So it doesn't matter how much nucleophile you have present or what it actually is or its identity, it does not affect the rate of the reaction. So this is only for SN2 reaction mechanisms. And basically the idea here is that the more dense the negative charges on the ion or molecule, the better it will be at a nucleophile. So that means anions are much more reactive than neutral species. So for example, an OH- would be a lot more reactive than water because of the higher negative charge on the oxygen and the OH- means that it's going to be more attracted to the partially positive uh, carbon that is present in the halogenoalkane carbon cation. So um, generally, anions are more reactive than neutral species. The second kind of factor that affects the rate of nucleophilic substitution reactions is the identity of the halogen itself. Now this does affect both SN1 and SN2 reactions because they are both involving the breaking the carbon-halogen bond in its rate determining step. So um, here what we have is uh, looking at the CX bond. So the X is the halogen. The rate is going to depend on how easy it is to break that CX bond. This is dependent basically on the bond energy for each of the different halogens. And so a CF bond has the highest bond energy. And then going down, down to CI, is the lowest bond energy. So the rate would be fastest for the CI bond because that takes the least amount of energy to break and would take the longest for a CF bond because that takes the most amount of energy to break. The next factor that affects the rate of substitution, nucleophilic substitution reactions is whether the halogenoalkane is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Um, and so there's a couple of different factors depending on if the mechanism is SN1 or SN2. For SN2, the overall rate of the reaction is that it's fastest for primary, then secondary, and finally tertiary. So tertiary is slowest because SN2 involves both the halogenoalkane and the nucleophile. That means that if you had a tertiary halogenoalkane there, you've got really big bulky groups surrounding uh, the carbon that the nucleophile is attacking. So it's too hard for that nucleophile to attack with those big and bulky groups. Much, much easier to attack when it's a primary halogenoalkane. For SN1, the overall rate reaction reverses. So tertiary is fastest, followed by secondary, and then followed by primary. And this is dependent on the stability of the carbocation that is produced in the first or the rate determining step of the mechanism. So essentially, the more alkyl groups that are present that are attached to that carbon or the carbocation is going to make it more stable. So this end is more stable. And if you have less alkyl groups attached, then it's going to be less stable. So it really just depends on the stability of the carbocation formed. More alkyl groups are going to stabilize that carbocation better. Now, um, SN1 tertiary is going to be faster than SN2 primary with sodium hydroxide. And this is just something uh, that's being measured by experiments. So we should know that SN1 is always, even for... for 
the fastest SN1, it's always going to be faster than the fastest SN2. Finally, the last sort of factor that affects rate of substitution or nucleophilic substitution reactions is the choice of solvent. So in terms of solvents, there are two main types. You can have polar and nonpolar solvents. Now, polar solvents can be broken down into two different types as well. You can have aprotic, which means that you have dipole-dipole bonds or dipole-dipole forces, but you don't have hydrogen bonds. Whereas protic means that you have hydrogen bonding present. In terms of uh, looking at then how they solvate the nucleophile, protic solvents can solvate the nucleophile. And that's because when we're talking about the nucleophile, we're usually looking at the OH minus nucleophile in the reactions at least that we're looking at. And so this can hydrogen bond with the, for example, maybe the protic solvent is water. A product can't solvate the nucleophile. So just kind of keeping in mind those particular things, SN1 reactions are going to favor protic polar solvents. And that is because they can hydrogen bond with the nucleophile, so they can solvate the nucleophile. And basically by solvating the nucleophile, it inhibits its ability to attack the carbocation. If we didn't have that, if we used an aprotic solvent instead, the rate would actually decrease because the nucleophile would then be available for attack. So we don't want that case. So really, protic, polar protic solvents are really good for SN1 mechanisms. Now, SN2 reactions will favor, it depends, it, they'll favor aprotic polar solvents if you have neutral nucleophiles. Um, they can't form hydrogen bonds with a nucleophile, and so that's really good. So this is suitable if you have something like water as the nucleophile. But as soon as you have a nucleophile that is charged and has a negative charge like OH-, then SN2 actually favor nonpolar solvents. So pretty much um, the, the reactions we look at, the reactions with sodium hydroxide, SN2 is going to favor or be the fastest in nonpolar solvents. And that's because uh, the, we want the nucleophile available. And so that's going to really sort of destabilize those starting materials more than the transition state by the presence of the nonpolar solvent. Um, the activation's lowered, and so it speeds up the reaction. Okay, so those are our four factors that affect the rate of nucleophilic substitution reactions. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.